Um, we are here to welcome Gustavo Ott. He is a extraordinary playwright, director, longtime friend of Gala, longtime friend of Hugo's, and confidant, I would say, um, sharing his work that sometimes Hugo approved of and sometimes not. Right, Gustavo? <laughs> <laughs> they had a wonderful relationship. He's been a fantastic partner. He recently, he founded um, Teatro San Martin in Venezuela, which is still in full operation, which is a real testimony to legacy and strength. Uh, I think Maria Brito is there now, an actress from Gala as well. Uh, then he has been uh, recognized in Spain for his work, in the Caribbean, in the United States, in Venezuela, throughout Latin America. So he really is the person who we believe will carry on this legacy of Ugo's and carry us forward with change as we prepare for our 50th anniversary and um, keep our vision and mission alive, which is forever important and changing and reflects our changing community. Um, we're so excited to welcome Gustavo. So, bienvenido, Gustavo. Um, I think one story I'll share is that um, when we were interviewing Gustavo the committee, we asked about budgeting. And um, Hugo detested budgeting. He just spent because it was a dream and it was wonderful. And Gustavo piped up and said, I love budgeting. <laughs> so I went, wow, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> he was recently, Gustavo came from Teatro Dallas, where he was both executive director and artistic director. So uh, given that we have a small team, that bodes very well for us. And, Abel recently has been, as you know, um, incredible, in the interim artistic director, and Abel is part of passing the batuta because we've been together, Abel, thank you, uh, for everything that you do every day to support us and uh, to keep Google's dream alive. Gracias. Gustavo, vente. a better way to be presented to an audience um, than to be presented by Queen Rebecca. Um, there, there must be a way to know paradise. And if you don't know it, uh, be presented by, by Rebecca. And then you will know how paradise is. Um, thank you. Thank you for coming. I am, uh, of course, grateful. I'm very excited. Um, in the... Um, in 2003, I think, 2004, I came to this place uh, for the first time. And uh, it wasn't ready, of course. It was, you were doing construction in that time. I remember we have to wear one of those hard hats. Mm -hmm. And um, Hugo and, and Rebecca, they were very excited. And then, and then they, they showed me, for example, uh, look at this. And then there was a full bunch of debris and cables falling down, and workers going around, and then they said, oh, great, and then uh, Hugo said, this is the main stage. Wow, I said, I didn't see it, the main stage, of course, there was nothing there, it was nothing. And then he said, oh, and those cables, that's the lighting system. Oh, he didn't look at the lighting system at all. And then uh, <clears throat> suddenly, I, I think it was you, who said, and look at the ceiling. Well, that beautiful scene that you can see now, it was covered by some kind of plastic, was it? Because it was, so you can't really see it. They were talking about the ceiling they saw. And they said, look how beautiful. And, and I went, oh, yeah, yeah, it's nice, beautiful. beautiful. And, and then uh, at the back, there was all the trash. You know, construction trash, they depress you. They're, they're, they're the worst. And maybe because they re remind you of life. Somehow. So uh, they showed me this huge hall full of trash. And these are the dressing rooms. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. That's beautiful. And, and, and we're, I was remembering that last night, you know, how, how I felt this theater in 2003 towards 2004. 
and I suddenly remember um, one of the letters that Walt Whitman wrote to his brother, um, very close to his death, uh, well, Walt Whitman's death, and, and he states in that letter that he knows he was losing control of his mind. He was a nurse for a long time, and, and he can, in that time, he could somehow uh, uh, predict what was going to happen to him. And then he said in the letter, I want to say goodbye to the one who loved me all my life, the one who was with me all my life, that protected me, that one who found with me cover when I was afraid, the one who helped me with my pain, the one who shared my, my happiness. Before losing my mind, I'm going to say farewell to my imagination. Hmm. And, and then I realized, well, this is, this is something that, that really is with us all the time. Our imagination is our partner. It's, it's, and it's, we may say farewell to the imagination, to our imagination, but somehow we are the ones who live, and the imagination remains stays here. In theater, for example, that's exactly what we do. We finish rehearsal, we finish writing, that's what I do, I write. And, and then, uh, uh, you finish, you go to sleep, you go to eat, but the imagination keeps there, working. It's finishing the job. So I was thinking that today we're here gathering in this moment uh, because my friend Hugo may depart, but his imagination is here. Mm. Is this, this is tangible, we can touch it. Not like I did in 2003, the, <laughs> the is. but then suddenly now you can see not only the theater that he imagined with Rebecca and Abel. Rebecca's imagination and Abel's imagination are part of this gathering of, of ideas of, um, and, and images that now we can see them. We can see extraordinary shows. We can, we can enjoy ourselves and enjoy to be human a little bit in a time where war, fascism, pandemics, the idea of extinction actually for the first time in a very, very long time is with us. So I said, well, we don't say farewell to the imagination. Imagination stays with us. And if I, if I have a teacher and a mentor in my life, in my imagination, a personal one, it was Google. So I know, I know that I'm here to build upon this vision. A successful vision, a vision that, that is working, we, we, we can see it, we can touch it too. So uh, in, in, in all, I have to, to be part of that. I have to build from that. Um, and we are talking about extraordinary programs. Two of them are very dear to me, Paso Nuevo and Galita. I work with Galita. And, and Paso Nuevo is one of the best and most important programs in the city for me. Um, also, uh, we have to talk definitely about our classics program, supported by, by our Spanish partners. We've been allowed to see the best of the golden age in our language, the best theater of the world seen produced with the highest quality possible in the same level as Madrid, Ciudad de Mexico, or Argentina, or Buenos Aires. And we have the privilege to see it here. The most important part of our cultural heritage is in this theater. The program, the classic, the classical program in, in that Gala carries since long time, since the beginning. It's one of the treasures of this of this organization. And I would like to say also that the musical program, we be, we witness here musicals in that have nothing to end with Broadway. We know that we're watching Broadway-style musicals on this stage. But those musicals 
as an important link to our heritage, to our culture, to our language. We hear in them in Spanish, the most and most dynamic language right now in the world. Just studying Spanish, just studying, is almost 30 million people right now opening books to learn Spanish as a second language. Over 500 million people speaking Spanish around the world. And, and, and it's, 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 it's growing and it's grabbing attention. <clears throat> Not because it's in fashion, which it is. Many people love to speak Spanish. But because I think that our language has a way to understand reality that right now is necessary and important. Because there are roots to the solutions and, and to the to reflections through language that maybe in Spanish right now we need to hear. So that's why the third program uh, I I am very dear and, 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 and very important it's very important for me is the Latin American and Latino theater uh, in Spanish that Gala has been producing since the beginning. I am I have been producing this theater eight times and, and I'm of course know the importance of that program and for the literary and the playwrights around in, in, in the Spanish community. From Spain to Latin America, uh, Gala has been open, showing us the best and the most important uh, thoughts about society and human beings that our language is writing right now. So these programs are, 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 are the ones that I would like to build it on. And, and also, of course, the idea that, to continue the idea, that we have to, to make more links with DC artists. The idea that we have to reach to them, to, that, that they can find here not only a, a, a national theater for, for, for performing art, but also the neighborhood theater. That theater in the corner that you suddenly, for the first time, experience theater. The, the, we can open, and we may open, uh, not only auditions for actors, but only auditions for directors, auditions for playwrights. We, we need to hear pitch, we need to hear the community, our neighborhood talking about the things they worry about, the, th the stories they have to tell. Every face we see around this theater is different, and those faces have stories to tell. More community is more theater. And we have to be very, very, I think, very, very in touch with the community that's surrounding us. Because our theater and, and politics is, is changing. And if something has to say, somebody can talk about politics in Latin America and Spain, is theater. The Latino playwrights in America are very important and very political. They have a point of view of society that is not about the past, it's about the future. So we have to hear them. We have to go after them. I always say, if you see a playwright around you, grab it. Take him. <laughs> Take him with you to your house. Because they, they have something to say that you want to hear. Maybe you don't know you want it. But once you hear it, you will realize, oh, this is what I wanted. This is what I wanted to hear. This is what I wanted to say. The words that we would love to say. So that thinking about Whitman and and, and and his farewell to the imagination, well, let's say welcome to your imagination and mine and ours here. There's plenty to do, there's plenty to say, and there's plenty of space in this small stage for our imagination. Um, we may go, but our ideas may stay. Hugo's imagination is, is telling us, welcome. By the way, I have something to say to you. Let's sit, we have to talk. Thank you. Now, now I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to say something at the end. Uh, I wanted to, I know we, we of course, we greet uh, the presence of the, of the ambassador of Nicaragua, um, our Spanish partner, the, the, the Cuban, um, Cultural attaché. Ah, okay. Gonzalo. 
And, uh, the, but I would like to say something very personal. I would like to, to thank Gala's team, the people who are surrounding us, the, the, the producers, the, Dubraska, Delvis, Sylvia, um, the, te the, 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 the technical people behind me. Um, they've been very welcoming, and I feel, I still, I'm supposed to start working in January, but today I, I'm going to, do I have to, to, to put my car somewhere, some, some, some place, <laughs> because I would like to start it today. Uh, and this is, this is uh, the best team, and I'm, I'm feeling very, very, um, not only welcome, but also like <clears throat> enforced. It's like, like enthusiastic to start to work with them because they, I think they have many things to say to me and many things to teach me. So thank you for being here, team, and, and I will talk about that. Thank you. <laughs>